Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm Wilson Bickford, professional artist and art instructor. I'm going to show you how to paint a nice little autumn barn scene. I'll be using some of my signature products from my product line, my brushes, my paints. We'll get to that in a minute, have a little description. First, I want to show you what we're actually going to paint. Something along the line of this. It won't be exact necessarily, but it'll be something along this line. It'll be a really great lesson in how to do fall foliage and clouds and a rugged old barn. I do a lot of barns. Um, they're one of my favorite subjects. Here's another little cabin scene I did recently. Kind of wintry. This is basically the same one I'm going to show you today, only in a winter theme. And instead of the fall leaf trees in the background, I put some evergreen trees. Made it snow. Kind of the same scene. You could transpose your painting from today to a winter scene if you chose to. All right. Let me show you what I've done so far. I started out with one of my signature canvas panels, 11 by 14. It's a Wilson Bickford panel with an MDF core. These are great panels. If you haven't tried them yet, you can find these at Jerry's Artorama. I drew a basic sketch on for a barn. This is in one point perspective. It's a really simple perspective. You don't have to worry about any corners or side walls or anything like that. I kept it kind of basic for the sake of the lesson. Um, you can do your own barn the way you see fit, but I basically drew it on with pencil. Step number two, I took my number 10 flat brush and I painted in all of the wood texture. I left this roof exposed because I'm going to have more like a gunmetal gray roof on here. I painted in the underpainted the uh, barn board texture and the grass down in here with black gesso with this brush. Now this is dry. That was step number two. Step number three, I took that canvas and I have applied masking tape. Everybody says, well, what do you use for masking tape? Anything special? Nope, it's not. I go right to the hardware store. I just get the everyday variety masking tape. You'll see that when you cover that up, your design shows right through it. I cover that up and block it out completely. I take a little sharp X-Acto knife, utility craft knife and carefully trim away the tape, everything that's not barn and not land. These areas are protected, which allows me to go into my bigger brushes and just plop the background in, not have to paint around anything. Makes it very simple. For tools today, I'm using one of my two inch scenery brushes for my product line. A one inch scenery brush, which is gonna be great for rendering that foliage in the background. One of my large texture brushes, which I'll use for the grass later on. I'll be using my number 10 flat somewhat again. Uh, I'll be using one of my rake brushes and my number two script liner that I just dropped on the floor, but thank goodness I have another one here right at the ready. So uh, this is my number two script liner. I have a palette knife out here I may or may not use and my number six round brush that I may or may not use. We'll see how far we get into this. But a lot of you have been asking for me to up the ante a little bit because I've been showing some really basic beginner type projects that are all wet on wet. And a lot of what I do is more detailed than just the typical wet on wet uh, style that you see Bill Alexander and Bob Ross do. I do a lot of uh, underpainting and stuff like that to get more detail in my work. Although a lot of it is the same approach and same method as what they used. I've kind of uh, crafted in, in, into my own style and done my own thing with it. Okay, having said all that, let's paint. I've masked that out. I can freely put the background in. I'm going to be using some of my Wilson Bickford Fast Flow White Base Medium to put in the background to blend the soft uh, colors into the background. Let me refer back to this one again. I'm not going to try to match this one exactly, but it's going to be close. Um, the white base coat allows us to get soft edges in the background where we want them. I'll be using some of my signature clear medium over the black later on. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay. Uh, because I've got my palette vertically, I never paint like this. I've got it on this uh, angle for sake of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've taken some of my white base coat. I can't squirt this out on my palette, obviously. This is just a piece of glass that's painted white on the back. Um, I can't put this up here on this vertical surface. It's going to run all over the place. What I did just before the camera started to roll is I took a paper plate, I squirted some of this medium onto the plate. So I'm going to take some of this base coat, 
not a lot. And I'm just going to put a very thin coat all over the sky area. As I said, this lubricates the canvas, wets it down, makes it easy to get soft edges in that sky where we want them. Put a nice, very thin, uniform coat over the whole white area. Now notice I don't have to paint around that old barn. It's masked out and protected. That's why I did that. It makes my job simple. Speaking of old barns, I do have another video out that was released a few years ago. It's called Let's Paint an Old Barn. It utilizes a different approach in this. There's some underpainting with acrylic, but we're painting in black and white shades of gray that it looks actually like a black and white photo and then oil glazes are added. Gives you a much more realistic effect, actually. You'll find that available on my web website, wilsonbickford.com. So if you're interested in something like that, check it out. Okay, I've got enough base coat on there. All you need is enough so you can get a little bit of a fingerprint. That's all you need of that. Most people put way too much of this stuff on. I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean blue into that large brush with the white still in it. And I'm going to work it in evenly. So there's no streaks in the brush, no chunks. Now this is a different blue than I used in this one. This one has ultramarine in it. I could have used ultramarine today and I was going to and then I thought, well, I'll show you something different just so you get a different flavor on it. Ultramarine is one of my favorites, but as far as fall foliage, I really like to use the cerulean. It's just a preference. Um, I like the way the cerulean reads against the oranges and the other fall colors, so sometimes I use cerulean. And see, I'm just dusting in patches of sky. I'm leaving some white showing as clouds. So I'm leaving the sky open, as they say. And I'll take just a little bit more. I'm going to let it get a little lighter as I come lower down behind the barn. Which means I'm just using less pressure. I'm depositing less blue off the brush and it's picking up more of the white base coat. I want it ultimately a little darker near the top sky. So I'm going to come back with a little blue, a little more blue. And I'll make these colors a little richer than maybe normally I would just so they translate to video a little better for you. I want to thank everyone who's been uh, watching my videos on YouTube and uh, buying my product and sending me their emails and whatnot. I appreciate that. appreciate your support. I, it's my pleasure and my honor and my privilege to bring these classes to you, these lessons. So I enjoy doing it. Okay, now, if it looks a little grainy, smooth it out a little bit. And just use a lighter touch. I'm going to switch over to one of my one inch foliage brushes which is very comparable to the two inch one I just used. Same thing, just a smaller version. I'm going to take a little bit of white and you'll notice I tap this on the corner. This is a different way to do clouds than what I've showed you before. I have a good lesson, a couple lessons on YouTube that show you how to do clouds with a fan brush. This is just a different way of doing it. Quite a bit of paint and what I want to establish is the top edge of the cloud. So if I just kind of turn the brush, notice I'm turning the brush different angles so you get a rounded billowy shape on the top. This will impart a little bit of texture in it. If I can get the camera to pull in really good and tight right there, you'll see it looks pebbly. Some people like that and leave it in there. Sometimes I do. It depends on the given day. Every time you paint, you're going to paint differently depending on what your mood is. If you don't like it that textured, just tap it a little lighter, keep tapping, and you'll see the, tepper, the texture kind of uh, flattens down. So you can do it to whatever degree looks good to you. And since I have cloud lessons already here on YouTube, I'm not going to finesse too much on these clouds. We're painting a barn here today after all, but notice how I kind of describe the top of the cloud shape and I let the bottom just fade away. Makes it look connected to the sky. It anchors it. Light comes from above, so it's going to hit those clouds on the top more than anywhere else. And that's a simple way to do some clouds in here. Just make sure you're not doing a repetitive shape where it's a circle, a circle, a circle. So I'll just put a couple little touches of cloud in here. And like I said, if you don't like the texture, you just keep pouncing it till it smooths out a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. I'm just going to wipe that brush off on a towel. I could wash it, but I really don't need to. 
If you've painted with me before in class, you'll see that I'm not much of a brush washer because a lot of times you don't really need to wash your brush necessarily. So I'm just gonna wipe this off on a towel. I'm gonna put some of these background trees in. I got mixtures of burnt sienna, some Van Dyke brown for the deeper shadows down here, some cadmium red light. I could put a little ochre in it if I chose to. It's all good, whatever colors. I could put a little, few little touches of green into that if I wanted to. Um, not all the fall colors change at the same time. Sometimes you'll see some reds amongst some greens. Here's what I wanna really show you on this palette though. Notice how I'm really loading this up on that corner. I want it on that beveled corner of that brush. That's why I designed this brush with a bevel on it. If you get enough paint, most people don't get enough paint on it. You'll notice I keep taking more paint. I'm looking at the texture that I'm getting on my palette. If I get texture on my palette, I will get it on my canvas. And until I get it on my palette, you'll see that I keep adding more paint. There we go. Now see that's very loose and opened up. And watch right here on my palette. If I take that and I just touch, it gives me that leafy texture automatically. I've got a lot of paint so I don't have to use a lot of force. I can simply do something like this. And it really describes tree shapes in behind this barn. I'm conscious of where the barn is. I can see the taped edge. So I'm kind of weaving this in behind it in a pleasing manner and I'm not going right up over the top of the roof and encapsulating the whole thing. I want it to be pleasing to the eye so I'm looking for a certain flow. That's part of being an artist is uh, seeing that in your mind's eye and making it visually appe appealing to the viewer. I'm running out of paint here. It's, I'm getting less texture on the palette so I've got to add more back into that. You've got to maintain that texture once you get it. Put a little bit down here, maybe make the trees a little shorter on this side. What the heck? Just don't want it to be the same. Mother Nature's a good old gal, but she's not perfect, so don't paint anything too perfectly. The biggest thing I see in my classes is my students tend to try to make everything too perfect. Now to really add some depth to these, we're gonna add some shading at the bottom. Like I said before, light comes from the top, it hits the clouds a little stronger little less underneath it's going to hit these cloud these trees excuse me the trees on the top a little more a little less down below you're going to have shadows down below so having said that i'm going to take some of this van dyke brown and go right into that burnt sienna and get a much darker richer orangey brown and i've got the tape there so i don't have to worry about getting it tight to the horizon line the grass line because it's going to be protected i'll just put yellow against that when I put the meadow in. So I don't have to be too careful. That's I like to paint smart, not hard. So anything I can do, like mask this stuff out and that sort of thing, I keep reaching over here because I'm used to having my palette over here. Um, anything I can do to simplify the process and get a good result, I'm all for it. See how that adds a lot of extra depth and drama to the bottom of the tree line? So I'm going right along the edge of that tape when I pull that off. The meadow will lie right against that bottom of the tree line. And so I just work this up. I turn the brush to and fro, so I work that up in. So it happens gradually, so it's coming out of the shadow up into the lighter areas. I'm going to switch over really quickly and take my liner brush. I have a pail of uh, paint thinner right here sitting beside me. Now this is going to run on this palette being vertical and I knew that so I put a little bit of a rag down here to catch some of the drip. But like I said I did that so you could actually see what I'm doing here. I'm going to thin this down quite thin almost like milk. I'm just dipping into some mineral spirits over here. I'll put a few little tree limbs back in here before I add the highlights. And I'm not going to go crazy with this. I just kind of want to give you the idea of how to do it. I will be the first one to tell you most people do not get their paint thin enough like this when they're using a liner brush. You've got to add quite a bit of thinner and keep it really good and thin. But this will give the trees a little bit of a skeleton inside so it looks like there's something holding up all that foliage. I'm doing more or less trunks and not so many of the finer limbs. When you're painting at home you can take all the time you need obviously. Again I'm going to wipe this brush off. As I said I don't do a lot of brush washing. I don't really need to. 
I've seen people who like to clean their brush every time they look at it. All they need to do is look at it and they think it needs to be washed. I don't do a lot of washing. I don't need to. I've found through the years that if I just really wipe it. Now, if I had a really, really dark color, I'm going to a really light color. Yeah, there's certain instances where you have to break down and wash the brush. But this is, I'm going from dark to light. But if I really wipe it, I can get away with it. <clears throat> now, this is the cadmium red light hue. I'm going to load it up quite generously, just like I did with the burnt sienna. I'm going to say the light in this painting is kind of coming from the right, in this way, streaming in a little bit. And again, I'm just adding paint to that corner of that brush until I get that pebbly texture. It looks like leaves. Once I get it there, it's going to happen on my canvas. I want to break these up. Now see, that's starting to show. I'm going to go a little bit lighter by adding a little touch of ochre, yellow ochre. Maybe just a little smidgen of white. I'm going to lighten it up a little more. Just so I get a little more emphasis. Like I said, I want to make sure this shows up on video for you. So I might run the contrast a little more than I normally would. Although I like bright colors in my painting, so I paint for color. Uh, the color is the biggest aspect of painting that I like. So I'm not afraid to go bright on some colors once in a while. I'm going to be filming some more DVDs along at this same time uh, that will be posted in the near future. I'm going to do one with some birds and a lot of people have been asking about my knife painting style because I do a lot of paintings with just solely a couple of palette knives, painting knives actually. There is a difference between a painting knife and a palette knife. Um, so you want to check those out. I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube. If you haven't seen them, you can search my name on there and pull some of those up. I'm getting into more of the free, or not the free, but the full lessons now where they're not just helpful hints and tips that I started out with. I'm actually kind of doing some full projects here now for you because I've had a lot of requests. But I just added a little more ochre, a little more uh, white to that just to kind of change the flavor. I want that to look kind of loose along the perimeter, loose and leafy. Looks pretty good, don't you think? You could do this, I know you can. Very simple. It takes a little practice, but what in life doesn't? Okay, I'm going to remove the tape. And you'll see that that black barn is still under here. You may have to grab your palette knife or your... Uh, sharp knife to get under some of this tape to get it off here. Try not to drag paint into your black area of your barn if you can help it. If you do, get it in there, you can uh, wipe it off. I try to keep that nice and dark black. There's my barn. Here it comes. If you haven't checked out my website, give it a shot. It's wilsonbickford.com. I have a Facebook page that I post new artwork on almost every other day and my class schedules and whatnot and workshops are listed on there. So if you're a Facebooker, join me on Facebook. We'll be friends. Okay, there's my barn. I'm going to come in with some of my clear medium. Like I said before, I, I can't, it comes in a can. I can't put it up here on the easel and, or on my palette. So I actually squirted some of that out on a plate just like I did my fast flow white medium earlier. And I'm going to cover the whole barn. Now this flat brush is great for getting into these square shapes. This is the brush I used to actually paint the barn in after I drew it on. And just to refresh your memory, memory remember that I drew that on and then I painted it into this point, which brings us to where we are now. This one was just masked out. But painting that in with the black was very easy with this brush. It's a great brush. It holds a really nice precise edge. And I'll do the uh, little white roof over here too. Wouldn't necessarily need to, but it'll make the other paints flow on a little easier when I get ready to do it. Just put on a thin coat. You don't need real heavy, a real heavy application here. Just kind of, and I'm hurrying here just for the sake of time. Because I know you're sitting there watching and I don't want you to get bored. So I want to keep this moving ahead for you. When you're doing it at home, take your time. I don't paint this fast when I paint at home. 
not quite this fast. I do it, I enjoy the ride. You can drive 90 miles an hour and hurry up to get somewhere, or you can drive 50 and enjoy the ride and the view as you go. And I, that's the way I paint usually. I've just gotten used to painting so much that I can do it quickly, but it's not that I'm necessarily hurrying. I am here a little today, like I said, for the sake of the video. I'd like to thank Obsidian Custom Video for doing my filming of these lessons, and they've been with me since the beginning, so make sure you check them out. I'm sure they will have their graphics and their website listed on the screen for you. Check them out. I'm going to go back to my liner brush. Now, I don't have much here for discrepancy. If we can pull right in here tight, you're always going to have this. You're never going to trim it perfectly. I didn't either. But notice there's a few little white edges here where I didn't quite cut exactly on the line and some of the white shows. You can either mix up a black. Now I could take uh, my Van Dyke Brown and some of the blue and make a black. Sometimes it'll look like you need to take the black out. Sometimes it'll look like you need to take the background color in. In this instance, it looks like I need to take the background color in. There's nothing on this brush. It's just my little liner. And if I go in and just kind of dab, pick up some of that wet, background color off the trees I can pull that right in around those edges and close that gap up that simple there's nothing with oil that can't be fixed quite easily sometimes it's a matter of taking a rag and wiping something right off with some thinner or scraping paint off but it can be done oil is the most forgiving medium out there I don't use it because it's the most forgiving. I use it because I think it's the most colorful. There's nothing that matches the richness of oil color in my book. I know uh, watercolorists will argue with me on that, but uh, that's my opinion. That's why I like oil. Okay, I'm going to make a couple reference lines here. If you remember this original design, you can see that this main bulk of the building stands frontwards. It comes out. And these other two sides look like they set back down the back wall off either side. They're on a different face. It's, the whole building is not on the same face out front. So I want to find these lines. They're pretty easy because I can see they're, they're coming right off the roof peaks. I want something really dark. So I'm just going to take some of that Van Dyke brown that I used for the trunks. Just a little enough of orange in there to uh, make it show up. And just a little indication of where those lines are nothing too serious and I know my land is going to go across like that so there it is couldn't be much easier now we're ready to roll this is the uh, the black is just the shadows and the deep darker accents within the barn wood and the cracks I'm going to use my rake brush to put texture on here now as far as the doors and windows go I could paint around those it's a really a kind of a pain. It's a much harder way to do it. I could try to paint around the windows and the doorways and leave them behind. Or I can just simply paint the whole thing and then paint them in black. Or I can take my wipe off tool and actually scrape the barn color off and bring the windows back. This is a handy little eraser. If you watch right here, it just scrapes paint away. It'll do that same thing on your canvas if you make a boo-boo. And it's good for etching stuff out, like I just said. If I'm going to just uh, pull out something uh, from the, you know, remove some paint to expose something, it's good for that. So I'll just wing this. I'm not sure where I'm going to put my windows and doors. I can put them anywhere I want. So the, tr the key to using the uh, rake brush, now I'm going to mix up a gray color, is to get it thin enough. The bulk of the brush needs to be full of fairly wet paint. A lot of people use it too dry and then they wonder why it doesn't work. You've got to get that bulk, the heaviness on the bottom end of the brush full of paint. That's your reservoir that feeds those little tips. And you'll see that it gives you this striation like barn board. It's also good for doing animal hair. If you're doing a long haired animal like this or grass. So I'm dipping into some paint thinner here, just mineral spirits. I'm going to take brown, some cerulean blue, and a little bit of white. I'm looking for something grayish, barn board gray. If mine leans a little towards blue gray, that's fine with me because I love blue. It's my favorite color. I'm not going to go as light as I can possibly go yet because I'm going to build up and go lighter each time. 
Now see, as I'm adding more paint in the, into that, it's thickening up. I can feel it. And I can tell by the feel of it. That's how uh, much I've done this. I can tell by the feel of that on my palette what's going to be right and what's not. I'm going to go with something about like that. Now you'll see that I'm going to really steady my hand. And if I just pull down lightly with the tips of those bristles, it gives me a really nice barn board effect. I'm going to let it stay a little darker against the edge of that building so that will look like it's down the side of the building further. I keep reaching over here. I can't get over that. I'm force of habit. I keep reaching over here for my palette. I forget that it's up here because I never use it up there. I'm going to go on this side and work my way in just a little bit towards the line again. See all the roughness in that? Looks like you're going to get splinters in your hand. I can come back and lighten that a little bit too if I choose to. Um, from here, I'm just going to do the front face of the building. Now be careful you don't press down too hard. If you press down too hard with this brush, let's zoom right in here on my palette. If I take it and use just the tips lightly, you get those little lines and those striations. If I press down too hard, you get that, which is just solid. And the reason most people get that is they don't have their paint thin enough and it won't flow off the tips of the bristles, so they feel compelled to press down harder to get it off the brush. Well, when you do that, the brush flattens out. It'll come off the brush, but it's going to come off solid like that. So it wouldn't hurt to uh, just take a piece of scrap cardboard or paper or something. Just try, get a little familiar with this brush before you launch right into a full painting. Having said that, I could take this right now and if, say it was not working out and getting too full, I could take this and I could scrape this off. Watch this. See, I can scrape that all off right back to black and I can redo it. Like I said, oil is very forgiving. Don't be afraid of it. I'll just clean that edge up a little bit. So you can always fix things. You're going to learn more from your mistakes and having to bail yourself out of some uh, boo-boos once in a while. You're going to learn more that way than any other way, anything I can actually even show you. Okay, that's looking pretty good, don't you think? I'm going to add just a little touch of white with that and lighten the whole color down another step. Another value, just a little bit. It's more interesting if we put more color in it. So, Especially on this corner. I want this corner to come forward. See how it's coming out and shoving that little shed back down? Um, I'm leaving it a little dark up underneath where all those eave shadows are. So I'm not even going all the way to the top. It just makes it look like a really nice natural shadow area up there. Okay, now I want the front face of this to really stand out. I'm going to bring emphasis to this corner. Right now we don't have a focal point, but we need one. Every painting needs a focal point. On this one, it happens to be this corner. You'll notice that that corner is illuminated a little lighter. The grass is lighter in that area, so it gives your eye somewhere to target. If you walk in the room and never seen this, and all of a sudden you look at it, your eye tends to gravitate right there. So I need to build that up a little more as I proceed, so I will. I'm going to take this and wipe it off. I'm going to take a little more white into that gray. I've got to thin it down again to the consistency I had. I'm going to bleed a little bit of that brown back into it, so it's kind of a brownish gray, just to change the flavor. Don't use the same color all the time, it gets boring. But I want this to be a little bit lighter value. There we go. So that area stands out a little more. And as I work my way across the barn, I'm just going to let it kind of trail off and become less and less and less. So it's more distinct on this one corner. And I'm going to come back and embellish that corner with the liner brush and really play that up. But that's looking pretty good, don't you think? I'm so glad I'm getting to show you this. So many people write me constantly and say, can you show us more lessons? And we want to learn more than just the big brush wet on wet. Can we show something with detail? So this is great. I'm, in, I'm loving every minute of this. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm going to go back in with my liner brush now. Pretty much that same color. Maybe lighten it just a touch more. Just enough so it's going to be a noticeable difference. I'm thinning this right down quite thin. 
rolling the brush and right here on the edge I want to single out a few individual boards which is really going to make this corner pop and see I'm just doing vertical stroke vertical stroke vertical stroke I'm working my way across the barn letting the, the brush run out of paint eventually it's just going to kind of quit doing anything at all and I just let it slowly taper off but it brings emphasis to that corner which is going to be our focal point I'm just using my finger there to take out a couple little smudges that I didn't like up here on the top all right it's looking pretty good um, let's do the roof on the other side here before we get to those windows and doors just for the heck of it um, I want that to look like metal roofing maybe rusty metal roofing so I'm gonna put some of a blue gray in there and then put some burnt sienna over it so for a blue gray I'm gonna take a little bit of white a little bit of the cerulean blue and I can just pull it right out of this puddle where I had my sky because basically I want it to look like a kind of a reflection of the blue sky in that tin roof I'll put just a touch of Van Dyke brown with it now here's the issue um, my sky is blue and my roof is going to be blue so I've got to get a different differentiation in the value so they show up apart from each other so I got to go a little darker or a little lighter and since my sky is very light it's a matter of contrast I'm going to go a little darker on the roof it makes sense to go darker rather than try to go lighter and basically I'm just going to kind of fill this in a little bit and you'll see I don't take a lot of pains with it if it's a little blotchy and I got little variations of light and dark from the brush it's all the better it's an old barn it shouldn't be perfect you want to see some discrepancies in it and some imperfections and again this square brush works great for getting into that like I said before I better mention this but like I said before um, I use this to put on my black but the difference is in after I got done immediately after I used soap and water and I didn't necessarily use a brush soap I used dish detergent but a brush soap would be better but um, this is a uh, synthetic bristle it can be used for oil or acrylic but if you're going to go back and forth between mediums make sure you wash it out in between with brush soap and water in between when I go back if I was going to go back to acrylic now after having this in oil I would wash it with soap and water before I went to acrylic and coming back from acrylic back to oil I'd wash it with soap and water you can do that um, with a synthetic bristle you can't do it necessarily so much with a uh, uh, an animal bristle natural bristle okay I'm going to take a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and when I say a little bit it's just a little bit just a, just enough I don't want to get it really loaded you'll notice I'm going to hold the brush kind of flatly like this not with the ends it's kind of almost like a dry brush approach I'm going to put a little bit of rust on the roof don't go crazy and I sometimes I turn just the corner and just drag a few little lines down where it runs down the ribs and the roofing oh that's looking pretty darn good don't you think I'm gonna take that same color and right over here on this roof and you're just gonna see a little flat edge of that roof if it's not gonna show I've got to alter that maybe I'll put a little bit of the roof or the yeah the roof metal blue on there instead and then a little touch of the rust because the rust was reading against the trees and it was not showing if I put the blue on there and then I can put a little couple little touches of rust with it all right that's starting to come into its own I think I'll go back to the liner brush and I need to outline the perimeter of the front end of the roof just to bring that out I'm going to use some of the same blues that we used for the roof and again this is ultramarine like I said at the beginning this is cerulean the cerulean I really like the way it reads against the oranges of the fall color so you can use cobalt blue any color you want but I'm going to use the uh, liner brush and I'll take some of this white and cerulean blue mixture that I used for the roof before I'm out of it so I'll just mix some more up doesn't matter if I nail the color exactly it's all going to be in the ballpark roll this together to a nice point and I'm going to outline the edge of the roof so you're seeing just a little bit of a foreshortened edge of that metal roof notice I'm really steadying my hand here on my easel 
And when I'm not talking, I'm holding my breath because that's a touchy spot right there. Okay, now see, I, I rinsed that out and I'm going to take a little bit of the rusty color, just like I did before, and here and there, I'll touch a little bit of that rusty color in there. Randomly, just kind of spot it, a little here, a little there. All right. What do you think? Looking pretty good for the time we got involved in it, don't you think? All right, we need to worry about some doors and windows here. Um, like I said, I'm not even going to look at that sample back there because I don't care. I don't remember what I did exactly, and I, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do something, whatever I feel like right now. Painting is about making decisions. Now, see, I'm going to come back with this wipe off tool. And I'm going to etch some of this barn wood texture right out of here. And that will give me my door. I'm going to put a big door in, one that looks like you could drive your tractor into. Wipe it off as you do it because you're going to pick up paint on the edge of it, obviously. Now see, that does a pretty good job of it right there because of the black underneath. If this wasn't black underneath, if I had to wipe something out of the sky, you'd see white canvas. This is taking it back to black because the underpainting was black. So because it's a dark doorway, it works in this particular instance. Maybe right here I'll put a window of some sort. And if it's not dark enough, you can come back in and paint it in with black. But this is a good way to find them and get them etched out. It's easier to actually get them square with this and then paint them in than it is to, try to just try to paint them square. If you've ever tried to paint square windows or square anything, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. See, I just kind of etch out most of the paint. And I'll come back and show you how to touch those up. Maybe there's an entry door over here, a walk-in door. Like that. Um, I mentioned earlier I might use the. Uh, I won't need to. You know, I'm gonna say I'm, I mentioned earlier that I might use the uh, number six round brush. I was gonna grab that one, but I really don't need to. I'll use this uh, flat brush. I'm gonna take uh, Van Dyke brown and cerulean blue, and it'll make the the. Uh, brown even darker. It's going to be very dark. And see since it's a square doorway and the brush is square, it's a pretty easy process just to darken that down some. I'll put a little bit of a molding or frame around the windows and the doors too just to make them pop out a little better. But this brush will hold a really super sharp edge and it's a great brush for doing stuff like this for anywhere you've got to get edges and lines and I use it for my roses if you've seen my rose video here on YouTube it's great for florals it's one of my favorite brushes in my line okay I'm gonna come back to the liner here for just a second and I'll take some of this lighter barn boardy stuff I'm not gonna mix up a special color I can just use the, the trash that's on my palette here take some of this and if I very carefully just outline the doorways and the windows it looks like I've got a little bit of a molding or a framework around them now it looks like it's leaning and it's crooked a little bit so that's okay it's an old barn like I said I'm not uh, taking pains with this I'm painting a little faster when you're doing it at home take your time a little more so See, I can square these up now and put a little bit of a framework around them. Dolls it up a little bit. And like I said earlier, this is just one point perspective. You can put your barn in any shape that you want. This is a very simple one to start out with. You're just looking straight on at it, not worried about the sides. Even if it was a uh, three-quarter view and I was seeing part of the side and it was turned at an angle, it would be the same approach. I'd just leave one side overall lighter, one side darker so you got light and shadow. 
All right, let's take my one and a half inch large texture brush. This is a great brush for what it's designed for. It's designed for doing grass and bushes and trees. You can do all kinds of stuff like that with anything with texture. And I simply load it up and I just kind of dab like this. You'll notice you see some black show through there, all the little dark recesses in the shadows. The black's already there. Just don't cover it all up. Don't lose it all. I'm going to take yellow ochre to start out. And just like most of the brushes, it hinges on using enough paint. Don't be so frugal that you're shortchanging yourself on the quality of your work by not using enough paint. My paint is really thick and full bodied and firm for this application. It works great because I can keep thinning layers down over this thicker foundation to build it up. <clears throat> But so again, it relies on the amount of texture. So you'll see that I keep dabbing until I start seeing that lacy, pebbly texture on my palette. And I'm simply just taking it and just tapping down. Like that. Now as you do this, don't just do lines across. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Because you, it's going to look like lines. So you have to be a little artsy with it. And see, I don't have to use a heavy hand. I got a lot of paint on there. Make sure you cut off your tree line distinctly. What I meant by not doing lines is just don't go, don't do a line all the way across, come down a little bit and do another line, come down. It'll look like lines. So you'll see that I kind of dance around a little bit once I get rolling with it. Keep enough paint on it. When I start seeing the texture getting minimal here, I know I'm running out of paint. And you'll see that I grab more paint immediately. Let that black undercoat do some of the work for you. That's your shadows. So we don't have to put a dark shadow in the grass. It's already there. Just don't cover it up and lose it. I'll come back and add other colors into this. I'm really quite happy with how this is coming out. You know, I've painted scenes like this. This is one I do in class, so it's not like uh, this is the first time I've ever done this painting. I've painted so many paintings in the last 25 years that I've, I wouldn't even have a clue as to how many. But it's like anything in life. The more you do it, the easier it's going to get. I'm going to take some white and some yellow ochre. And right up around that corner of the barn that I said I wanted to be the focal point, I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. I want a nice soft glow there and let it just radiate outward and downward and just disappear. A lot of times in class my students will do this, they put it on like that and they just leave it. And it looks too hard, too dominant, it's all stuck in one spot. You have to go the extra mile and let it fade away. I do that very simply by just letting the brush run out of paint on either side and as I come down and just let and use a lighter touch as well and it'll just fade away. So see, I don't stop right there. See how concentrated that looks? If I keep working outward, left and right, and downward, and just use a lighter touch, I'm running out of paint. And so it's depositing less of the light paint. The dark is starting to come back and take precedence over that. And it kind of makes that glow, a soft glow. All right, looking pretty good. Um, sometimes I go back and I put other colors into it just for the heck of it. Maybe I'll take a little bit of sienna right on the dirty brush, doesn't matter. Maybe I'll take a little sienna, put a few little minor touches of that in there. It kind of gives you color harmony because it ties the background into the foreground and makes your painting harmonious. I could also take this and wipe it off just to shake things up a little bit, make it different. That's why I've got some of this green up here. This is just straight sap green. I wiped, notice I didn't even wash the brush. I just wiped it off. You probably noticed I hardly washed any brushes at all. I didn't need to. I switched the liner out a couple times in between colors, but these bigger brushes, I didn't even have to wash them. I just wipe them off and keep rolling. Um, I'm going to put a few little touches of green in here once in a while, like there's some little green bushes and whatnot. 
I'm not sure what a whatnot is, but if I if I had one, I think it would look like that. <laughs> Just little plants and vegetation. It's all good. All right. I'm going to wipe this off one more time very thoroughly. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to take some pure white. And again, I'm going to load it. And even though I had green on there, notice I wiped it off, squeezed it and wiped it right off really good, really well. And there's not much green in that at all. Taking a lot of paint and notice how I've got that really loaded. So I can use a light, light, light touch with it. And I'm just going to put a few little extra light things in here. Like maybe there's little flowery things or Queen Anne's lace or something out here in the meadow. It gives it a little more interest. Notice how that just pulls your eye right to that spot. Usually you're building up to your focal point and that's the one of the last things that gets the strong emphasis. All the other stuff in the background was playing second fiddle to this focal point. Those are the supporting actors, but this is the star of the play right here. I'm going to wipe a little paint off and let that just kind of fade away. All right. You think you can do this? I know you can. I know you can. It's just as easy as what I'm showing you. I recommend just watching this through a couple times and then play it back. And if you're going to paint along with me, just stop it and pause it. And you can follow right along with me. It's, it's just as easy as what I'm showing you here. You have to kind of develop the touch and realize how much paint to use and how heavy of a hand, how much pressure to apply it. But once you get past that, it's just as easy as what I'm showing you. I'm going to take a little bit of the cerulean blue sky color with a touch of some of the brown stuff here on my palette. Make kind of a blue gray. And way back here somewhere in the sky, I'm going to put a bird or two. They're just a stretched out letter V. I thin this down on the liner. Anytime you're using the liner, you've got to really thin the paint down. I'll put three birds. I'll put one over here somewhere, too. Minding his own business. All right. I think that's a wrap. It looks pretty good, don't you think? I know you can do this. Check out my website. Join me on Facebook. Check out my product line. I've got a whole line here of stuff that's geared towards this method, and you're going to love the products. I really fine-tuned them and on my selections, and they're good products. And check them out. I'll see you further on down the road. Let's paint.